Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to get in the back half of the floor as well as the outer sill and then my lovely new rear wing. If you're new to the channel previously, we welded up the inner sill, got the outer sill fitting correctly and then welded in the front half of the floor as well as getting the outriggers in properly as well. Anyway, let's crack on. While you've been gone, I have also finished off the seaming of the welds. There you can see the penetration. Back there, I've also welded in a little bit of angle iron there. I've not welded it at the end because I think I'll save that little bit till the last, till I have to fold all these edges back here. Now again with these floor pans, they are totally awful. They don't fit at all. I've just got to make the best of it again. So yeah, with my vernier calipers here, I want this line to line up with that line. So what I'm gonna do, take my scribe there and then score down along there and then go something like that obviously we'll neaten that up and then I'll get that cut so the two weld lines are both square another thing to note is the floor pan at the back again it we're just doing the best we can do these floor pans are awful what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my joggler and hole punch and I'm going to punch a load of holes all the way along, plug weld it and then I'll trim the flack of the floor pan here so I'll take away the excess there and I'll take away the excess on the angle iron there so it looks nice and square. So it looks even. I'm going to drill some holes here so I can plug weld this side. There we go, all drilled up. Obviously those are all drilled up there but it needs, obviously, it needs to be lifted up. Uh, I'm just going to clean this edge up. I have cut that away there so it, it's within 5mm of the edge. So I just need to get that cleaned up and I'll hammer the edge too and I'll start the weld along that side. I decided to start with the seam along the first edge here. I decided on this so it didn't fling up when I started the rest of the welding. The panel was already difficult to keep down, I had to hold it down with a hammer. And there's no chance you can get a clamp in anywhere there. I followed this up with the plug welds to the outrigger. then did the opposing side of the floor pan. I did this again in the hopes that no edge would fling up and make it impossible to weld. Nothing too difficult here, just a few plug welds. I've got a few little plug welds here on that side of the floor pan. So I'm just doing edge by edge. I don't want one edge to pop right up. Right now, now that that corner's in, I'm just gonna bang all this edge to here and then I can start welding that. I've already done a little bit of a seam there. Quite nice and neat. Um, these red floor pans actually seem like the higher quality metals and of zinc primer looking floor pans. Although those, I think, were more expensive. Yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll carry on getting this all done. That is the floor, now I'm mostly welded in. I've had a slight issue with my welder. I've had one of my mates come round, he's looked at it, and the printed circuit board appears to be broken. And here he comes. <laughs> got a sound of waver for that now. <laughs> so I've ordered one of them. So I can't really carry on with welding the back end of the floor pan, but it's in enough for now. But in the meantime, we are going to cut off this rear wing here, get the edge joggled in, get it fitting correctly because it sits into the sill. We'll get that done now. I've also run out of grinding discs. I'm going to try and get this off with my tin snips best I can. I've found another disc. I may as well get the wing back on, get it roughly where it is. I'll mark out the line of where it should be going and then we've got a line to cut to then. And there we go, after a little bit of cutting action, the wing just peels away, literally. Um, now looking at this wing here, you know, again, it hasn't actually had a rear quarter on this replace. You'd see, you'd see where the panel has been joggled in. But again, yeah, it's not actually too bad under here. The main reason why we chose to change this rear wing is because of all the rust. You'll see rust all around here, on the inner arch and then between these two skins as well. Now if you don't change the panel, you're not actually able to get to that rust and then it'll just creep back through on, over the new spray job. And there's the rear wing off, not bad at all. Now I've had this Sealy Super MIG 180 welder 
for about seven or eight years now and it's been pre fairly trouble free as I did buy it brand new. To be fair, only as a hobbyist, I wouldn't have expected it to go so soon. So £109 later and a week later, we now have the new board. So we can get this fixed and hopefully carry on welding without any more problems. Before, the solenoid for the gas was constantly stuck on and I had no wire feed. Now the solenoid works and the wire feed works. So we can go back to fixing the car, I guess. Back to this lip here. Just gonna cut away the inner lip. I'm gonna repair the outer edge. And there's a few places here where I'm gonna have to actually cut the top edge away as well. So we don't want any rust between the two seams of the new panels. So yeah, I've just laid a few bottle blobbles on here and there. I'm just going to carry on laying them all the way down. Get this lip repaired nicely. So uh, I wouldn't even bother using any of that rust converter stuff on here. Really, you just want fresh metal because you never truly get it out. And the last thing you want is rust between the new panel and this here. So that's why I am replacing it. Anyway, I still can't find my welding gloves with this crazy. What can they do? What can they do? Oh, there we go. So I've now done a third of it. I'm going to clean up this third here and I'll show you that and then I think I'll just do the rest of it off camera then I'll we'll show you the final result obviously. Lovely, lovely, nice and solid. That's what we want. After getting the old panel off at the front edge, the panel actually fits quite well. The only problem I'm going with is this end piece here. Obviously being a pattern part, that, that edge isn't really the right shape for the original panel. Although a little bit barbaric, the best solution here is just to bend this lip round here so the end doesn't end on like a corner, it ends flush. I did try and trimming a little bit off it, but that didn't work. So yeah, just gonna have to bend that around a little bit there. So we end on a curve. As I say, pattern parts like these are never perfect. Okay, now I could probably push it too, but because I want the arch to line up properly there, if we look underneath, we we'll still need a little bit more off there so it matches the shape there. So I think it's gonna have to be flat. It's going across there. Very hard to see. So for reference, if you're doing this yourself, that whole edge there wants to be flat. We do, don't want that fold there at all. And so what I'll do, I'll just tease it round my fingers first and then I'll hammer away along the line. There. And there we go. Ending on a flatter edge there. And there we go, just with one single clamp there, it all fits nicely. Again, these panels aren't the best, but as, as rear wings go, you know, putting a quarter in, there's always a little bit of fettling. But yeah, I'm pretty, pretty pleased with that. As you might already be able to tell from the part of the inner sill there that I've actually started to come off, I've misaligned the inner sill. The actual lip here was five mil too far out. Now that's pushing the outer sill up too tight to the bottom of the door. Now I could actually solve this issue by sitting the outer sill about five mil or so down there. If somebody removes the rubber door seal, we'll see that the sill doesn't align. No, I don't really like that. I'm gonna have to cut it back. I've looked in pictures online by the rear subframe mount. It's supposed to be flush to it, whereas mine was five mil pushed out. This time I actually tacked it on lightly, but I'm pretty confident that it is now in the right place. I'm gonna trial fit this. So yeah, I've got the flip lip there, pretty much flush. Shut the door. Clamping onto the back lip here. You've seen pretty good, nice good gap all the way along. That's me there happy with the back half. I'll now seam weld it and then I'll repeat the process on the front half. I also seam welded the floor pan to the inner sill. 
the inner sill is now nearly welded up, ready to go on before I carry on. I've had a look at the old jacking points that go internally on the sill. They are actually in not bad condition. I wouldn't say they're awful. With the price of those buying those new from James Paddock, I would much rather use a bit of angle iron. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get those welded in. I will trial fit the sill one last time. I will then grease up all the little lips that I need to grease up. And then we can start welding it on. And there we go. All seamed in there nicely. That's better than what's there originally, eh? I'm just going to slap some under seal in there, a bit more protection before it goes on. I wouldn't recommend doing this while the heart crack this stuff is flammable. So we've been here before, obviously. Uh, this is my hole punching juggler. I'm going to punch holes along the two lips at the top and the bottom. Then we can get a plug weld on the car. I'm just going to trial fit this sill one last time. If I'm happy with it, I will then line the wing up against it because we've got the two edges that meet there. There, if I'm happy with the wing, I can take that off and I'll start welding up the outer sill. I think it should be all right though. Off camera, I also repaired the B post here. It does make it a lot easier for lining up. Just to butt it up against the edge there, knowing it's in the right place. I've got the trusty pot of grease. I'm gonna get this in between all the gap all the way along. And it's nice and protective for the future. Probably should have done this before it was off, but I really don't want to take this off again. How much of a pain it has been. You might notice here I'm using two clamps on each plug weld. This helps to make sure they're flat and so we get good penetration and then a good, solid, strong weld. Right, slight change of plan. I'm not actually happy with how the bottom lip of the inner arch is fitting. The skins did fit nicely together, but as you ran your hand underneath, it just didn't really feel very nice. So I've cut it off. Uh, I'm gonna plug weld it from the front through to there. Anyway, for now, before I do that, I'm just gonna neaten up this edge, go right up to the line, and then we can juggle that in. Let's get the edge juggled in anyway. Now that we're all juggled in, we'll now strip the paint off. The wire brush attachment on the old angle grinder. Safety first, then the face mask for protection. The lock's just an ejected. Yeah, it's done most of the way. Before we start welding that on, anyway, I've just got a couple plates. I'm just going to repair the bottom of this to the sill. Now I've welded at the back there. Once those welded in, I'll then start getting the wing on properly. Once again, we have ran out of welding gas. Here's another £58.60. Hopefully it does a little bit more this time. It's lasted two months. The bank account is certainly getting a little bit drier. All dressed up nicely. Uh, I've only used a stone disc, I've not bothered with the sandpaper disc. If it was like an outer panel where it can be seen, I'd, I'd go all the way. But that will do for there. Uh, I'm just gonna get some zinc primer over the top of it and then we can get in this back window. So I'm just juggling this in on two edges the edge that meets at the left hand side of the B post and then the bottom bit that meets the sill. The rest of it will just be tacked well along, we'll build it up slowly so we don't get too much heat distortion. Last thing to be done before the wing goes on is of course the old trusty grease. Now we're gonna want this on between all the mating surfaces. The primer in the spray cans is quite expensive and what I have ordered is a big five litre tin of brushable red oxide. So it does a similar job, but will be a lot cheaper. Obviously when I've dressed up all the floor pans and everywhere inside, I will be putting a lot of that everywhere. Apologies in advance about the lighting. The garage light on the right hand side is gone and then all of a sudden the LED light's gone very dim. I don't know what's gone wrong with it. I've obviously never worked on a stag before so it's very much trial and error. The most important thing about keeping this back wing on is keeping this seam original and not looking like it's made out of filler. So to get this done at night, obviously it's not nice at the top yet because there's no blobs on it. What I've done is I've lined it up here with the seam nicely, got a tack on either end, this leading edge here, I've stretched it out a little bit, and then after the blobs on there, I've managed to get a clamp on there, pull it in, I've had to hammer it tight to it, and I think I'm gonna have to work my way all, all, all the way along, including at the top there, get that in, and then we should have a nice clean door gap all the way along there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a nice spot well at the top 
and then I'll start working my way along, putting a few blobs here and there just to make sure it's square everywhere and hopefully it all works out. I'm just chiseling the holes nice and close, then they're ready to be plug welded. Like I said, I have to bend this front lip towards the front of the car just to make it fit right. It obviously then needs bending back with the chisel to make it fit right again. It's obviously a slow process, but at the end of the day, we want it to look as good as it can. And now I'm happy with the door gap. Even though I've only got a few plug welds in there, I'm just going to start working my way along the wing. Now tacked everywhere we need to be, the wing's looking pretty good, it's time to start laying tacks on top of tack. We're spreading the heat across the panel so we don't want to get in too hot anywhere. A good amount of tacks along there, so it's going to need quite a few more. I'm going to start being the plug weld along the lip I've got, it's a little clamp, clamping it as close as I can to, and then I'm just going to spot it. Just like so. Just the knee grinding down, but that is absolutely fine. One down, six more to go. To answer the question of how I've welded this seam here, through the door panel at the back, you can actually access it. Just, just a simple plug weld at the back there. Right guys, I think we'll call that a video there. I feel like I've done quite a lot in this video here. The wing fits really nice, the sill fits really nice. We've got nice, clean, even door gaps all the way along, which is kind of hard on these. I would not recommend these for a beginner whatsoever. Join me next time, where you'll see all the wing dressed up nicely, get all the floor pan dressed up nicely, proper rust proofing. I'll also reskin the bottom of the door and then prepare myself for moving on to the other side. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, press that subscribe button, and we will see you next time.